This is the artist Michelangelo. He was known by many things, as a sculptor, an architect, and poet of the High Renaissance movement. But one thing he doesn't consider himself to be is a painter. So today we are going to look into the story and history of one of his most famous paintings he created, and that being the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, located in Vatican City. Our story begins in 1508, when Pope Julius II asked Michelangelo to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in his honor. This is what the Sistine Chapel looked like before Michelangelo was asked to paint the ceiling. According to an essay by Christian Sapella, Michelangelo was tasked to paint the ceiling with the geometric ornament and place the 12 apostles and spandrels around the decoration. Michelangelo proposed instead to paint the Old Testament scenes and divide them by the fictitive architecture that was used to organize the composition. The painting took about five years for Michelangelo to complete and is considered to be the cornerstone of high Renaissance art. The vast murals which cover the ceilings and the walls of the chapels employ foreshortening. Also, the painting's illusionary architecture helps showcase its luminous color palette, dynamic movement, and Michelangelo's distinctive treatment towards the complex structure, which helps showcase various scenes from the Bible. As I stated before, the location of this painting is in the Sistine Chapel in Vatican City. The Sistine Chapel itself is the location for Papal conclaves and many other important religious services. So it is definitely fitting for a painting with various religious tales to be inside of a holy sanctum. This awe-inspiring painting was constructed to follow a narrative and is divided into three sections. In the first three paintings, Michelangelo tells the story of the creations of heaven and earth. This is followed by the creations of Adam and Eve and the expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Finally, the last three paintings showcase the story of the Noah and the Great Flood. In the four corners of the painting, you can see scenes depicting the salvation of Israel. On the side of the paintings, 12 biblical figures, all men and women who have been said that they prophesied the salvation of mankind through Jesus Christ. Also depicted alongside the upper windows are the ancestors of Jesus. Sitting across the fictive architecture are little babies that sit across the frescoes and are accompanied by prophets and siblings. Just so you know, the siblings are ancient seers who foretold the coming of Jesus Christ. Although the most famous of these frescoes is without a doubt the creation of Adam, this painting has become very ubiquitous in modern culture for its dramatic positioning of two monumental figures, that being Adam and God, reaching towards each other. But as I'm about to show you, not all of the frescoes are painted in this kind of style. As you can see by this painting, titled The Creation of Eve, it is similar to its male counterpart, but referring to an article by Malcolm Ball, the iconography of these frescoes give off an alluring sense of wonder. It makes you think about the significance of these religious images and their story. So all these frescoes have their own unique story to tell. The first frescoes Michelangelo painted for the ceiling contained multiple figures much smaller in size engaged in complex narratives. This can best be exemplified by its painting of the deluge. This painting is part of the story of God wiping out the human population for the sins of the wicked. Michelangelo has used the physical space of the water and the sky to separate four distinct parts of the narrative. On the right side of the painting, you see a cluster of people seek sanctuary from the rain under a makeshift shelter. On the left side, you see even more people climb up the side of the mountain to escape the rising water. In the center, you see a small ball it's about to be capsized because of the impending downpour. And in the background, you see a team of men working on building the Ark, the last and only hope of salvation. In 1510, Michelangelo took a year-long break from painting the Sistine Chapel. The frescoes painted after this break are characteristically different from the ones he painted before it, and are emblematic of what we think of when we envision the Sistine Chapel paintings. This one, for example, is God dividing light from darkness. Other paintings, like the creation of Adam, where the narratives have been pared down 
to only the essential figures depicted on monumental scales. So because of these changes, Michelangelo was able to convey a strong sense of emotion that could be perceived from the floor of the chapel. The imposing figure of God in this fresco illustrates the separation of darkness from light and the creation of the heavens and earths radiates power throughout his body. And his dramatic gestures help tell the story of Genesis without the addition of extraneous details. Michelangelo finally completed the Sistine Chapel in 1512 and its importance in history cannot be overstated. It gave inspiration for young painters and gave Michelangelo the will to return to the chapel 20 years later to finish the last judgment fresco on the altar wall. The influence not only reached future young artists, but at the time inspired other well-known Renaissance painters. For example, it inspired the likes of Raphael, who was struck by the genius of the Sistine Chapel he rushed back to his school of Athens paintings in the Vatican stands and inserted Michelangelo's weighty monumental likeness sitting at the bottom of the steps of the school. So for my artwork, I decided to take inspiration from the Sistine Chapel ceiling. And instead of having various images from the Bible, I decided to have a theme of the history of metal. So I incorporated various images of metal and rock bands in the metal I put the most influential metal bands and the side of the influential metal and rock bands for each in different genres. I also put two other images on the side. One of them is a court case and the other one is a church burning. Both events which help shape metal in its current form. And in the corners I have symbols of, of the metal culture. That is the end of my video. Thank you for watching.